YouTube, good morning guys, uh, it's Mike here, back with another video. Um, today is about mid-June, and I just wanted to go through and, and show you guys uh, the, the progress on the garden, a little bit of a, a backyard garden tour. Um, been doing a lot here, and I think the gardens are looking really good this year, so, uh, so I'm just going to go through, I'll, I'll walk you guys around, show you what's going on and how I'm practicing a little bit of a, a permaculture design situation, um, integrating food and growing food into my already existing landscaping uh, just in a pretty standard backyard so um, let's go ahead let's jump right into this and uh, and I'll show you guys what I got going on all right guys so I just have you I have you mounted up uh, I'm gonna walk you around and start showing you so um, this is my my raised bed garden you guys are pretty familiar if you've seen uh, some of my other videos I, I showed how i built this what kind of soil i put into this how i kind of uh, cycle through it with different types of cover crops and now growing uh food in it so um just to make it brief we um in the front i have broccoli here and now this broccoli might be too late um, but we're gonna see what it does um, I have uh, Brussels sprouts in the back, um, these, these four right here, Brussels sprouts. I have um, some peppers, it looks like one of the Brussels sprouts fell, fell over um, onto the pepper. But uh, here's some, these are, these are spicy peppers, I have four peppers here, another four peppers right here. And uh, if you see, we actually have a little pepper growing, that's a Hungarian hot, so. Um, I have to come back here and figure out these leaves. I don't want to shade it out. Uh, here's another. This is a, a jalapeno coming in. But these are these are growing. These will get a little bit bigger, and, and they'll really start pumping out some some peppers for us. Um, coming toward the center of the bed, I did uh, some some uh, bush bean. These are a little patch of bush bean. I was hoping that these would all fill in, and it'd just be a big, you know, big bush of beans to come in and pick and eat. Um, right back on the other, the front side there, that's kale. We have a variety, it's the blue dwarf, and then I think this is just like your standard green. I, I forget the name of the, this kale, but it's pretty typical. Um, and then another, another blue dwarf right there. Um, coming back over here, I have my, one of my last radishes of the season. This actually could probably pull this up and out. Um, some beets in, down below, eggplant, um, and I have got the question guys. I'm getting mangled by these flea these flea beetles here. You can see one right there um, They're just eating up. So maybe leave a comment down below if you if you've dealt with these guys or what you've done right now I'm using diatomaceous earth. I'm just kind of Sprinkling that on the leaves and then every five or six days. I'll come in and I'll hit it with um, neem neem oil and it seemed to, to kind of help. Like it seems like they're outgrowing the beetle, but there's still some damage. So let me know what you guys use down in the comments. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. But continuing on, um, we have uh, sweet peppers here. So these are a uh, bell variety of sweet peppers. Um, I have five or six plants of those. So th that'll be fun. And you could see one of the bell peppers are coming in. It looks like a green one. So that's exciting. Um, and uh, moving toward the end of the bed, I have uh, some onion, a little bit of onion growing, which is exciting. I love onion, and um, it's actually cool. I'll come out and I'll cut this stuff and just put it on my, my salads or whatever, so that you can enjoy the onions all year. Uh, this might be a weed. So this is a, I'm sure you guys have dealt with this. Uh, I planted this thinking it was a pepper, but it might have been a weed the, along the whole time, so. I'm just kind of letting it ride right now. It's in a, it's in one of my square foot spots, so it doesn't take up too much space. But I'll probably pull that out. And right here we have a cabbage. So we have two cabbages growing. Uh, you know, cabbage are tough for me. I don't I don't really like cabbage, but I had the seeds and I figured, you know what? Let me just grow two of these guys. I, I'll try them out. I think that we get like a cabbage worm. Uh, in this part of the, this, the, the year here, so it might be too late for the cabbage. We'll see what they do. Some more beets, a little bit of clover growing up, and that's what I have in the raised bed right now, which is exciting. So I'll plant some more stuff here as things come out. Like when I pull these radishes and cabbage out, I'll put in something else, um, you know, start some seeds and, and maybe put some more onions in there. They, they seem to do well. 
But uh, moving on here, we have um, the tomato bed. So this is where I, I put my tomato and um, I kind of trellis it up. Um, I, let, I let them run the, the, the tube that I have on the ends, run up these posts here. And then uh, I have the, the tomatoes running up these strings. And this is something I learned from James Prigioni, which is pretty cool. Uh, this kind of these these strings kind of support the tomato, which is exciting. Um, it, you know, you don't have to have any any kind of like straps or nothing like that. You just kind of twist the tomato right around the string, and as it grows, it just keeps going up and up. Uh, here's a good example when I haven't done it in a couple of days. So this is tomatoes kind of shooting off this way. Just kind of wrap it around, and uh, and yeah, it hangs on tight. So that's cool. Um, these are exciting. These are cherry tomatoes. So the cherry tomatoes will be getting ready to grow and uh, we'll be ready to pick these soon. Got basil interplanted. This is basil down here. This is a variety I haven't grown before. It doesn't grow like the typical basil, but man, it tastes and smells delicious. Mm, yeah, really good. So over here is a little herb garden. I'm doing uh, this. This is the second year of this and Jesus taking over. So we had spearmint in the front and in the back I did a, uh, a sage, a, a lemon balm, I, I believe it's called. And um, this stuff just took over the, the spearmint, which usually hits the other way around. So I love both of them. What we do with these is we just put them in our water. So we'll just take a couple leaves, we'll kind of smack them and then um and then just drop them in our our, our water and, and it's, it flavors the water very nice mild taste so there you go guys you can do flavored water for cheap uh for free so <laughs> and just plant some lemon balm and let it take over all right moving on guys i'm gonna try to not trying to make this a long video but we got a lot to there's a lot growing on so um this is the fig tree I guess this is the unofficial update of the fig tree. The thing, it died back. So we had a weird winter, a very strange winter this year where it wasn't necessarily cold, but it was very wet. And what I think happened was um, it would rain and then at night it would just dip below freezing and a lot of ice would form. And so ice sitting on these branches, I mean, even if it's a cold hardy variety, the ice will, you know, screw it up, and you can see where the, the the fig tree was burned, everywhere that ice sat. So on all these joints where the ice kind of sit, and I have a picture. I'll show you guys what the uh, what it looked like when it was frozen. Because when while it was frozen in around February, March, I said that's not good, and we'll probably have some problems. And and here we go. So all this is dead. It died back, um, unfortunately, but it does happen. The tree isn't dead by any means. It's actually uh, really blowing up from the bottom. I'll bring you guys in, give you a close up of what we're looking at. And uh, a lot of video creators or content creators, they'll tell you to prune all this back and let the tree really grow. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this stuff kind of grow wild as it would, let all these, these small, thin, straggly branches kind of grow up. And I'm going to use all of this as a uh, cutting stock for the for the, uh, the the winter season. So I'm going to let it all kind of grow, harden off a little bit, and then um, I'll come in and I'll cut these and use them for uh, clones or or uh, you know propagation purposes. So that's what I'm doing with this. So I'm just kind of letting them grow up, and then I'll select which branches that I really want to be the main uh, the main branches for the tree structure. I do like a bush shape, which is kind of what I had up here. This is, I like the how it bushes out. Um, so I'll probably go with something like that, just a little bit more selected, uh, not as bushy. So, you know, it sucks that it happened, but it's a good opportunity for a, a new start or a fresh start with the same variety of fig tree. So that's, you gotta look at the positives, right? Um, Here's a little propagation, uh, you know, experiment I was doing. It's blackberry and raspberry there. They both took very well. Moving over here, we have the cucumbers. Uh, I did some cucumbers here, which is exciting. Uh, the, the, I, I basically was fighting an aphid issue on these cucumbers. 
and um, they're just starting to break out of it, which is great. But a uh, little tip is if your cucumbers are small and you want them to grow bigger, pull the flowers off. You know that we don't need these little plants growing cucumbers right this moment. We want this thing to grow up, grow up the vine. This one's already starting to vine out and trellis up. Um, but that's that's the little tip there for cucumbers. Pull the flowers off and the plant will want to push out more vegetative growth and, and start to climb a little better. So these are going and this one is actually the winner of all because it, it was completely destroyed. There was nothing left but one little bud at the bottom, right at the bottom there. And it turned into, uh, you know, it's growing. So that's great. I'll take a flower off of this one. And these flowers, guys, they actually taste pretty good, too. Just like cucumber. Um, did a little bean, one, one climbing bean here, which is fun. And same deal, you can take these little beans off and the plant will grow bigger. It won't put as much energy into the, the beans itself. Um, moving on. So we have the rose hedge uh, with, <laughs> with a grape growing in between. So I planted a grape, it's a, a Concord grape down underneath um, the bottom there alongside with roses. I started these basically from, from a little cut. These were very small and they blew up, man. The, the goal for this was to kind of hide the chicken coop, the, the permanent chicken coop here. It was a little, little crummy looking. It's definitely got some age, probably 15, 20 years old. And, um, and we were sick of looking at it. We were gonna refurbish it. We didn't really want to, it was a big project. And we were like, you know what, let's just cover it up with something beautiful. And uh, this is what we did. So uh, the roses actually just finished their, their bloom and there's a couple left there you could see a little bit, but man, it was pretty when it was all opened up. We really enjoy that in the spring. Um, but we could look forward to the grapes. As you can see here, we do have some grapes growing in which is exciting these are the uh the concord so that'll be that'll be fun uh moving on over we have the blackberries so we didn't really design the the the, the infrastructure like the fencing around the plants like we kind of just had this this yard this situation all these beds and, and we put plants in after the fact so it just goes to show that you guys can can really just uh turn your existing landscape into whatever you want it to be and if you want it to feed you you can you can add that stuff which is awesome so um so yeah these are the blackberries this is the uh that was the second or third year right there and this is the second year of these so um, that's what it looks like year after year you can see one took kind of is way more established than the other but uh, they all grow in they'll all grow in so uh, moving on um, right here I had an empty empty gap in the fence and uh, I did I figured you know what let's fill it up so I planted some tomatoes just uh, just these are the beefsteak variety tomatoes um, I put four or five a uh, couple in there and uh, they're taking off they're doing pretty well so these will grow up and uh, my plan is to just kind of like trellis them to the fence and then let them spill over. The chickens will get what the chickens get and then I'll get what I get. So that's the uh, little bit of tomatoes in the side here. Just filling in space. Um, next, moving on, is the raspberry. And the, um, the raspberry really did well. So this is the second year. Um, and raspberry, is, uh, it, it grows canes. So the way that works is um, last year's growth will will bear fruit this year so you can see down here on the lower side this is all loaded up with raspberries and uh, we're going to get a ton of raspberries off of that and then this year's growth like this is all this year's new growth this won't get raspberries this year but it'll get it next year and then after the second year after it bears fruit it dies um, so this is last year's fruit bearing uh, cane. So this is dead now. So kind of it, it, it cycles through, but it's super prolific, meaning um, it just grows and grows. So if you see, all of this is new growth coming right out of the ground here. So like the, uh, the root system kind of spreads out and then it grows new growth, which is awesome. Um, Cause that means that every year this will get bigger and bigger. We'll get more and more raspberries. Uh, and I love raspberries, so uh, so that's good. And it actually even comes out further into the the clover or the grass here. And I just actually mow it. I, I just mow it right over because this is part of my fire pit space uh, toward the end of the property here. And I like to um, I like to keep it clean and mowed. So 
I, that's how I kind of control, make sure it stays along the fence line, the chicken run. Um, I just come in and mow it. So that's the raspberries, uh, exciting. So they're doing really well this year. And the chickens love the extras that pop through the, um, the bush there, so, or the fence there. So that's that. Now, um, like I mentioned, this is the, the fire pit area. I'm just gonna go around the property and show you guys everything that we got going on. So uh, moving on. Um, back over this way, I have a, uh, this is where I'm doing something new. This is kind of back toward the end. Like I have the pool filter over here. Like, you know, not, I don't, I, nobody really comes back here. Even me, I only come back here once in a while. But um, what I did was I put in, um, this is a, it's called the bitter melon. Uh, this is something my buddy sold me on. I never grew this. Um, but it is, it's a melon, it's, a, it's, it's, it's in the same family as like pumpkin and watermelon, things like that. So it's like a ground cover vining type plant. You can see it's, it's throwing off these little uh, arms that like to grab onto things and, and uh, you know, grow that way. So I, um, I put these here and I'm just going to see what they do. Um, uh, you know, this is the first time. I didn't really amend this soil. I just kind of popped them in, see, see how they do. Um, but I put three, so there's one there, one there, one there, and we'll, you know, I'll let just let them take over this area wild and climb up again on the chicken run if they get that far. Um, over here, I did pumpkin, so we'll see what the pumpkin do. And this is kind of a shady area of the property. I have a lot of high trees, um, you know, pine trees and things like that that kind of block out sun, and that's why we put the chicken run back in here. It goes along the whole property line. Um, but I put the pumpkin because I didn't have a place, a spot for them, and I wanted to fill up this area. See how they do. So these are young pumpkins, and this one's actually a couple weeks ahead of the other ones. Um, and again, like, you know, it's kind of in the back, so if it goes nuts and takes over, great. If not, uh, that's okay. But uh, moving on over. So now um, we're, we're headed back toward the, the direction where we started. This over here in this bed, uh, is all strawberry. This is all Juneberry. Everything that's green that you see here is, is called the Junebearer uh, strawberry. Uh, the Honai uh, Juneberry. That's the, 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 the breed itself. So um, every, all the strawberries come in June and they don't just come in June. They come in like the first week of June, the first in, into the second week. So this harvest is done already and uh, there's no more strawberries left. I mean, you might, there's a little bit of remnant. Matter of fact, this is a kind of a deformed one. I'm gonna eat it anyway. Mm, delicious. And um, we harvested so many berries this year. I think we, in the first day, so day one, we got five or six one gallon bags of, of full of strawberries. And my wife makes jams with them. I put them in my yogurt in the morning and make pancakes. So we use them up throughout the year, but we freeze them. And uh, I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, so the berries that we got, it, it, it was pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, but so that's the June bear strawberry. And then up here, I have my two cherry trees. So cherry tree one and cherry tree two. Now, um, that one I purchased, it was already a three or four year old tree. And you can see it's, uh, it's uh, pretty thick. It's a nice established tree. And then this one I purchased as a sapling or a whip um, online and it came and this is now its third year and it's doing pretty well. I mean, it's, you know, it's probably got like a one, one and a half inch caliper there. So it's, it's really uh, growing and I've been pruning it so it has a nice bushy structure about six feet off the ground, similar to this one here. I wanted to have them look the same and, I, and obviously pollinate each other. So that's why I put them pretty close together in this strawberry patch. Um, and what you'll notice the theme around my little like fruit tree orchards is I try to have layers of growing. So I, I like the orchard, the tree is obviously up top and I always like to put something underneath and interplant with them. Um, this way I'm really utilizing the space and these strawberries really help with uh, weed pressure too. They, they keep the, um, the weed pressure down. There's a little bit of weeds coming through over here, but uh, generally they, they really do a good job preventing weeds. So. Uh, moving on over, we're now in like the pool patio area. Here's the uh, the swimming pool. I've got some fish ponds. Not much growing uh, fruit and veggies back in there, um, but I do have them right here. So just to show you guys can really put plants 
at, that grow food anywhere and you can really integrate them into your landscape here. So um, right here, um, I have like a little like pergola or trellis, whatever you want to call it with grapes. And the grapes are really showing out. This is the this is the Fock grape, F-O-C-H. And um, you could just see it is pumping out grapes this year. It is really putting on some some good growth. It's actually a little out of control. I gotta come and prune it, but I didn't really want to disturb it because of how many grapes it's growing. I kind of wanted just to let it um, let it uh, do its thing for the growing season. I'll come back and I'll prune it up, clean it up after these grapes really mature, but it is just loaded with grapes, which is amazing. I'm happy. I'm really happy about that. So this is the Fock grape, and then on this side is a, another variety of grape that I might not keep around. It has, um, I believe it has some kind of a blight or some kind of a disease. Um, you know, it's, I'm not too sure. The grapes on it are not really establishing and growing like the, uh, the one next to it, the Fock. And the Fock is just taking over. So, um, yep, so I have those two grapes, which is nice. And that puts us uh, right next to this thing here, this big bushy weedy thing, which is an elderberry. And uh, elderberry, you know, that's something I'm not too, you know, excited about because it kind of tastes like not great um, off the bush. But a lot of people online, you can render them down into jams. You can add some sugar, sweeten it up. And uh, yeah, we'll see what these do. But um, this this uh, this thing grew like a weed, and I'm telling you, I dig it. I don't know much about the elderberry, but you can see here, um, it really put on. This is last year I planted this, uh, uh, 20, April 21. So really just uh, growing like crazy, which is exciting. And that puts us right into the orchard. This is um, you know the little orchard here. Uh, and I'll go over what we have. So right over here, I'm doing, this is a different variety of strawberry. It's uh, This is the Everbearer strawberry. You can see um, they grow a lot less strawberries, uh, but they, have, they, they grow them all year. So they'll, it'll just keep throwing flowers and the strawberries will keep growing. Um, coming back around it, so we'll start from the front of the orchard here, is um, I did a apricot. That's a peach back there, right here. This is a Asian pear tree. And then right here we have the plum tree. Um, next to the plum tree is another Asian pear tree, kind of right here. I started that one as a whip with the cherry tree, so those two are together. I did a, pl a plum tree right here, so we have two plum trees right here and right here. And then that's another peach, a much larger peach tree. Uh, the peach tree, they all pollinate each other. So I did two of each each type of plant, different varieties. Um, and those, that's like the little mini orchard here. Um, now, like I was telling you, I like to interplant. So underneath the uh, the fruit trees, I did squash this year. A couple different varieties of squash. You can see I have them in, in rows. Um, this is all a... Uh, uh, squ spaghetti squash. All of this over here is spaghetti squash. This on this side is the dark green zucchini squash, which we love zucchini here. This is just uh, blueberries. The blueberry plants are coming in. And then right here, all these little plants are the, um, this is a yellow squash, which is uh, pretty delicious too. So keeping, keeping the beds, trying to keep the beds full, even though there's fruit trees in them, you can always grow underneath too. And strawberries, you know, if you, they're always a go-to because look what they do. They throw runners, these, uh, these little runners here, and this will actually become its own strawberry plant. It's attached to the, the mother plant, and that's kind of how they spread. Um, so that's exciting. You can see it's throwing all these runners, and uh, that's good stuff, you know? It's all good stuff. So moving on over, I don't want to make this video go too, too long. There's another squash here. Uh, going over to the the apple orchard, um, walking by in the grass here, we got some landscaping boxwoods, right? Just some bo normal, typical landscaping. Behind it, the apple trees, and uh, the apple trees are doing really well. They're growing like crazy, but they don't have any apples. I think that there might be some kind of a disease, a fungal disease, or 
something going on. I'm going to treat them this spring with an organic fungal fungicide. Try to see what I can do. Some 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 people online say that it's common, but not sure why we didn't get flowers. But uh, underneath the apple trees, doing um, watermelon, and I just sowed these seeds. They're just coming up, and they're they're doing well. Little little seedlings. I'm gonna keep an eye on them, keep watering these until they establish, and then what these will do is like a watermelon or any kind of a melon that will just spread out and sprawl all over this area. Um, and, and give me good ground cover uh, for this mulch bed. So that's that's what's going on here. Stepping over, we have a, um, this is a cantaloupe. So similar to any type of melon, it sprawls out, cantaloupe. And now this is one that uh, is actually starting to sprawl. You can see what it does. It's just laying on the ground. It's shooting off these little growth vining things and 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 they're just kind of will spread out and take over the the area um last tree to show you today is the persimmon so this is the persimmons it's um it's it's something that i actually saved i rescued it from uh from the um just my a uh, garden center buddy of mine he was uh he had it in stock and he it was all dead there was actually only one branch that was alive and it was this branch right under here this is the only one that had any kind of growth or buds on it and this the tree was just like a, a stick and he was like the thing is dead i don't know no one's gonna buy it you can just have it so i was like i'll bring this thing back to life and this was last year so i really babied it last year it grew a little bit it was stunted had a hard time but I really took care of it, and now this year, it uh, it really just blew out. Like, I wasn't expecting it to do all of this. This is a pretty much all new growth. Everything you see here is new growth from the uh, the original stick down below. Um, and it's it's taken off. So I've never had a persimmons. I don't know what it tastes like, but um, we're going to find out here, hopefully, when this thing starts to, to flower and bloom. Um, and then right next to the persimmons, I have a... Uh, I do, I'm doing um, climbing peas. So these are all just peas right here. And I did these as an experiment. I just dropped some peas in the ground to grow. And they did really well. They took off. They gr they're grabbing the fence. They're growing along like, just like I want them to. Um, they do better and better every day. So what I did was I put more. I planted more peas in. And so these are about two weeks behind uh, those ones that I just showed you. So a little bit smaller. But... They'll be okay. They'll start to blow up and, and do the same like those are over there. Um, just using all the space we have to really grow grow uh, as much as we can. Um, and then last but not least, I almost forgot about these guys here. Let's go through. Let's go underneath and through here. Um, so this is kind of not where we ever grow things, but this is uh, more for privacy. These are just... Uh, green giant privacy trees because our neighbor's pool is right there and our pool is right here so we wanted to to plant some privacy shrubs so that you know we we can have a little separation but what i did was i also planted a hazelnut tree and not just one but two so this is one hazelnut tree and that's another hazelnut tree right here so this is, these are called the uh, Spanish filbert hazelnuts. And um, I haven't gotten any hazelnuts off of them yet. I got these as whips as well, same year as the cherry and that, that pear tree. And uh, they're doing well. They're really blowing up, getting some good structure to them. Um, apparently they, they can make really good privacy trees. They grow really bushy and big and shrubby kind of. So I figured I'd put them over here on this side, give me a little more more privacy. And then they could also pollinate each other and produce a ton of hazelnuts in the process. So maybe I'll make some, some kind of a Nutella spread when the, that, that day comes. But yeah, guys, so this was the, uh, this was the garden tour. The, I didn't want to make it too long. I hope I didn't bore you guys. But um, let's walk back over to the, the front and I'll, I'll send you guys on your way. So I'll see you over there. All right, guys, that's, uh, that's the end of the video. It went a little bit longer than I wanted it to, 
But um, I wanted to just show you guys, I don't think I've ever done a video like this where I just walked around the whole property and uh, showed you guys everything that I'm growing because I, I grow everywhere. Anywhere there's a spot for me to grow in my landscaping, I try to put a plant there and, and grow some food out of it. So a um, little long-winded, so I apologize for that, but you guys could skip around if you don't, don't want to see all of it and, and get to what you want. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the backyard garden tour, guys. So I will see you guys soon. I have a couple cool videos uh, that I'm kind of projecting for this coming weekend. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film for you and uh, hopefully get those up ASAP. So um, enjoy your week, guys. Enjoy your summer. Keep growing, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.